Okay, so welcome to another episode of Divana Ishk, our poetic tavern, which is a monthly space for a woman of, you know, destruction, <laughs> women on the path of, um, you know, destruction through love. <laughs> And uh, today's topic is basically vulnerability. Um, so we're going to try to be as real as possible. And uh, we look forward to today's discussion. Louisa. So I think um, with such a vulnerable topic, we actually we had a lot of things planned and structured. But I think to be honestly vulnerable is not to follow scripts and uh, and pre-made ideas or um, things like that but to let the heart speak so I don't know I feel I feel called to maybe actually just ask if if you all feel up for it like what what is vulnerability because that's maybe something where we can start to unpack the topic so if anyone feels inspired what i can do is um just kind of bring us into it by reading an excerpt right <clears throat> the wound is where the light enters you that's Malana Rumi and I am reading a scripted thing so I'm just letting you guys know vulnerability can be a powerful gateway to spiritual growth as it requires us to confront our fears and limitations and to surrender to the unknown when we allow ourselves to be vulnerable we open ourselves to the possibility of transformation and healing which are at the core of many spiritual practices vulnerability can also help us let go of our attachment to ego-driven desires and control and instead embrace a more open and accepting attitude towards life in the case of poetry uh, which is our main um, theme and our main subject area here. Poetry plays a great or a vital role in expressing our vulnerabilities into the open. That would normally take an effort to extract through the medium of poetic expression is su substantially eased. To release, to be unmasked, to unlayer our multiple veils requires courage, a disregard for reputation, a softening of the ego, a deconstruction of societal norms, <laughs> and more importantly, to be seen in our authentic self. A little bit of guilt going on, so I laugh usually when I'm guilty. <clears throat> yeah, so I, the second part I would totally agree with, and that brings us to our space because all of us are penning, writing, expressing our emotions, our states. And when we do that, we're basically, um, you know, it's a show and tell of the heart. And depending on how much we choose to share, um, I guess that depends on the level of vulnerability that we're open to. Um, would everyone agree with that? The idea of just having your uh works out there your feelings through words uh some of us who have published um it's out you can't really unpublish when the book has arrived in everyone's hands and so forth so how would you all feel about for example vulnerability and poetry I can start. Um, I think I've been a very private person when it comes to my work, um, artistic work, whatever you want to call it. Um, until I think, yeah, until I was, you know, urged by this one uh, to just throw it out there. And I think it's a very, it's like a, 
kind of split personality situation because on one side I really do think it's very very private the things we express from our innermost chambers and and on the other hand it's of course it's universal and and when we for example when I read other people's poetry if it's like highly general then like it doesn't touch anything it's the personal stuff that actually resonates and gives something so um yeah i'm still i'm still definitely struggling with putting out the most vulnerable kind of personal stuff and it doesn't have to be personal in like a individualistic way but just even like the the things that hold energy not just like because sometimes you can write something and then a few years after it's not very relevant and then you can put it out there but like even you know those things that are actually at the moment burning that's tricky i find You by the way do we have an that. obligation to be vulnerable that's another thing like it, it's a question that one should ask oneself only i think we we probably do have, you know, in the name of vulnerability and saying that, you know, we're pretty open about our stuff and whatnot. But I think still within that frame and context, we do have our boundaries, even in that. Yeah. Right. And it's time uh, people struggle. Are they ready to come out? And this is just a phase till they come out to with their vulnerability. Well, I think when even vulnerability needs a vessel to be expressed and known and seen and heard and stuff, right? So I think there's so many mediums to um, vulnerability, but a lot of it happens when we talk and um, and when we share like, you know, um, visible or audible, something that's tangible. Um, otherwise, what have we shared, right? Because in the 3D realm, you've got to see it, feel it, hear it, or know it. And um, for us here as artists and poets, um, <clears throat> on a personal level, I think for me, it's been, a great calling to 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 be vulnerable or to express and enter into the realm of vulnerability through poetry um i could say that for example um you know living in saudi arabia for the past 20 years i've been uh you know expressing poetically and there were there were many t topics and subjects that um, would be considered taboo or offensive, um, you know, culturally and religiously sensitive. But I found that instead of talking about it with people, right, um, poetry became this kind of medium to just easily birthed all these ideas out and I could kind of get away with everything because it came out through this art medium poetry so I started testing the waters I was like oh nothing's happening I'm talking about wine I'm talking about love and and I can tell you that definitely this was not happening openly for sure like within private spaces and behind closed doors I, all of this there's no doubt because this is how we humans survive um and and we discuss all these things but uh, openly due to fear and restrictions and all of that so poetry became like this beautiful um support system and 
and each time I just felt like more confident to kind of keep throwing stuff out, keep throwing stuff out. And it allowed me to um, be open to uh, possible uh, backlash. And I realized that I was, you know, confronting my fears through sharing and nothing like I was just getting stronger or um, more, let's say, um, confident about it. Um, what would normally be taboo or even religiously, ideologically, uh, a no-no, right? I, I, poetry um, definitely um, was a means for me to be vulnerable and then share so many things through that medium. Um, yeah. I have one interesting thing to share. So when I produced my first poem, I just wanted it to be hidden. I just wanted I just wanted to even tear the tear up the page. And you know, I'm also teaching poetry uh, in this semester. So I have I made the girls do the poetry and they did it once and they were surprised that they did it and then there was this one girl who came afterwards and she said i have done the poetry again i have written this thing and i want to read it out to you and she said that i'm going to make now i may uh, that now i'm going to make instagram page and i'm gonna share my works there and then yesterday i had this girl come up to me and i and she said i have written a few verses and then she said that I was like, for how long have you been writing? So she said, from from very long time, but now correctly, like I'm doing it for two years. And she had herself hidden for very long time. And then I said, no, now you have you you're not gonna get buried with your work. You have to push it out now, and you can come to me next time with your work out. So she hasn't messaged me yet. But I know she's just trying to come out of her cocoon. But when I was talking to her, she was as if intoxicated. And she's just in fourth semester. And I was like, what? What a gem. So I'm like, everyone, she just, my one student just wrote one poem and she said, I'm going out. And this girl is writing for such a long time. And she's saying, she's not ready yet. And she's so, she speaks in poetry. And I guess the subject matters too um, make it relevant um, or yeah in in relation to vulnerabilities because what what are you writing about is it political or is it like your personal journey um, the states of your heart um, and in the of the latter you know, that kind of expression is so personal and intimate and then um, everyone is basically accessing your heart that takes courage as well and so vulnerability requires uh, courage and also sort of like having your blinders on like not really I have to kind of get in that space of I don't really care um, you know about um, possibly what you feel or um, you know feel about it or whatever any any sort of um, opinions outside yourself uh, you have to get to that space, I think to be that We have um, we have a quotation here. That, um, I'd like to share. 
vulnerability is not weakness and the uncertainty risks and emotional exposure we face every day are not optional our only choice of the question of engagement our willingness to own and engage with our vulnerability determines the depth of our courage and the quality of our purpose the level to which we protect ourselves from being vulnerable is a measure of our fear and connection So this was a quote by Brené Brown, right? So technically what I read from this quote is that we can't choose to be safe. We can't make that choice that we're always going to be safe from getting hurt because that's not up to us. So when it comes to life, we can only either cocoon ourselves fully and then we're never basically engaging with the world. And we might be free from, like we, we think we're um, free from danger. Um, or then we basically exist in the world as part of it and then we're vulnerable because then we can get hurt. I'm also reminded of Najwa Zubain. I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. So there was this one uh, person, who, uh, she was talking about vulnerability. So then somebody asked, like, what if we get hurt? So she said, that, you know, you can be vulnerable, but it's like knowing your the knowing the right having the right audience having the right person because we, you are being vulnerable so that you shed that guard off but when you are not being with, with wrong people the the guard that you are trying to shed it's like going to add to that to those bricks so, so having the right circle is just highly important I was thinking about this as well and I think Brene Brown speaks of um, the importance of like safe spaces and I think um, like being a part of Divani Ish for example um, I think helped with my help with giving me courage to be vulnerable and sometimes I like test the waters and share something on Divani Ish and then that gives me courage to, okay, now I can like share it in a bigger circle or like share it on my Instagram, which is, you know, public, feels like a more public space. Um, and I, I remember when I first started sharing my poetry on Instagram, like after I would share the post, I would literally have this period of like shaking or shivering. It was like unlayering in a way and I would just like be sitting there like shaking and then after a while it would just kind of subside um and I think it was like my body or part of me feeling unsafe like I've shown such an intimate part of myself to god knows who um and I still get this feeling sometimes um but I feel like over the years I have become more courageous with sharing with strangers but I still feel like there are some people in my life that um and these people are like the ones that I'm somehow maybe trying to control their perception of me so I don't share certain poems for example or certain aspects of me so I'm just thinking about this um, as I'm listening to 
to all of you as well. I can highly relate with what you're saying about like this thing with people you know. Um, somehow it's like much easier. I also noticed when like people I know started to follow my Instagram account, it's like that's more difficult than having like total strangers because they don't know you. They don't have like this mold of who you sh- you know should be or supposed to fit into. And then, of course, there are those who really, really know you. And that's no issue either, because they actually know you. So you can be vulnerable with them. But it's like those half kind of, you know, they maybe know you from some certain area of your life. And then you're like showing this totally different thing. And yeah, that's that's sometimes uh, an interesting situation. And I, I thought about another thing, too, when you mentioned uh, this, you know, f- fear of putting things out there i have this uh person i know who is writing music and like a reflection that was shared to me was that like there's when you have something that you release into the world if there's like even one person who can kind of receive what you're giving in the way that you intended to give it I mean, like actually make you feel seen, then you can receive like a hundred other reactions and that's fine. But like you need that that one validation to kind of also dare to feel like, you know, okay, um, this was understood and this was received. And maybe that's what like the um, metab you mentioned, the safe also, you know, the surroundings where you put yourself out and the safe spaces that you mentioned, Mariha. So, maybe that's one of the purposes of a safe space to kind of have that resonance and then you can go from that warmth of that safe space and you can like meet whatever comes because you know that okay i i am me and other people see me as i see me also like there's there's someone who can affirm that you're muted if you're talking all right i was um just pondering over the idea of this desire to share um this kind of goes back to the human condition of us all being on a journey and um when we share our experiences um we relate to one another more deeper and better and we connect um and it's usually the stories that we hear that we're touched by and if had we not heard them or known about them and if someone hadn't shared then you know um we simply wouldn't be able to connect on that level so rather than like um part of the healing journey um have it like a bucket list thing am i you know checked off on my vulnerability is it there has to be something deeper that calls you to sharing um because you're technically sharing when you're vulnerable whether it's one person or a million people you know um so what is that i think we have to um we we may obviously question as to why but more than that i think it's more of an organic process um that drives us to kind of share and is it like are we yeah just just this idea to share for example uh, i'll just give a simple example of i think yeah it was in 2009 when i put out the story of the shams rumi phenomena um I just put it out there and I had no like idea who I was reaching. It wasn't even about that. It was just like me documenting my journey, but I didn't know where to do it like other than my computer. So I was like, okay, let me start putting things out there on a blog. And um and I was very, you know, raw and very carefree about how I was kind of expressing and just being out there that on that basis that's where like so many connections happen when people just sort of inboxing me and said well you know we connect deeply to this story or to this experience and um 
and and that just reminded me back then that you know we're never experiencing anything on our own so when we share we're basically um connecting this web of consciousness that is relevant to each one of us to whatever degree or another and um it's just uh it's it's just i don't know it feels um I think it's a beautiful thing to be able to share because we're getting closer to our own truth um and and like you know you said before sometimes you know there's people who don't see certain sides to us and when we allow that to be seen even by the closest ones that probably wouldn't uh be able to see that uh easier to share with strangers like you said um then are we uncovering these layers of duality and becoming one within and without when we become vulnerable uh cuz we're not kind of hiding certain parts of us when we're vulnerable we're opening that up um, so are we coming closer to our own truth when we become vulnerable you know something to wonder in the spiritual journey at least right it could also be you know related to la ilaha illallah because nothing in existence is but the truth right but reality so our reality or our journey our truth when we share we're basically being vulnerable and not hiding it so we're kind of like um there's no hiding in that there's there's like this exposure of truth and um i don't know if this is relatable like can you Um, um I wish I caught the beginning of this cuz I know this was good I needed this one. Um I think for myself I was born vulnerable and at this time in my life now I'm seeing that I have to learn how to control that because I it was taken advantage of and um and I'm learning I guess yeah who to be vulnerable in front of but first um and then I have to learn what to share you know and who to share it with what's valid to share and you know the first people you're vulnerable with is your family um but over time you realize when you realize they're not your spiritual family then it's like wow this whole time you're vulnerable with people that took advantage of that and then then you you hear safe spaces and so then you go to different places and everyone says this is a safe space like this one this like this club right here is safe space and it's like what makes it a safe space right like like so many times like man like you want to go over there and I go there and I'm just like like safe is like to me is just raw raw and received not like you're raw and it's like oh yeah yeah we let you make it you know one time I went to this um I went I'm from down south in America and I went to like the north of like the north part of America like the uh DC area and you know um I don't sound like how I look and I went and I performed and they um <laughs> the guy who like the host came after and he was just like all right um and then you know it's so funny the people who did relate and connected with me you know there was a few and the ones who did like connect with me it was like a strong connection you know um we you know were they african american yes you know <laughs> but what it is what it is like they we still were able to and and then i did feel like and it's crazy because i ended up going to another show with them later they invited me to do another show so it, yes when you show yourself like there is people for you but who's showing their self because when the wounded self is showing sometimes i don't know it's cuz like i show myself all the time to be honest i'm always vulnerable i'm at, when it's time i'm just telling the truth yeah yeah this 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 and that <laughs> like so i i just want to channel it 
so that it's, it's not wasted. So that's that's very key what you mentioned regarding who to share like you've got to know your audience and you've got to kind of decipher how vulnerable you want to be or if you want to be because there are many times you could be in a space and you totally want to like i'm not sharing my stuff here and that's actually quite fine too because just because you choose vulnerability as a way of being it doesn't mean you have to do that across the board and that's okay too because you have to feel comfortable where you need to share or when you need to share um or maybe not it seems like um you know the power that we have when it is shared in non vulnerable spaces then our power gets lost and that's why the security goes away um. energy is neither created or destroyed so there's never a wastage i've had you know a lot of people from random countries who would connect on that note um what i never shared but somehow they connected um yeah boundaries and boundaries and vulnerability that's another thing you know what what noor is basically talking about um but i'm just wondering like if the seeker i'm speaking through the lens of a speaker are we in this quest or in this process of wayfaring do we end up having the choice to kind of filter who we share with because is truth basically telling us be that all the time like sh- like um how can i kind of explain this um like halaj or jesus yeah you what you are even if it costs your life yeah regardless of who what where because um, sometimes we choose not to share in certain spaces because we may feel we're not received or understood but then that sort of uh, cautionary note um is based on our limited idea of what others may like it's almost like we're trying to protect them and protect us but um vulnerability sort of even breaks through that right um i mean i see um interviews of Maya Angelou or Nina Simone or um other people and i guess at one point you just become you know, once you know know yourself and you're sure of yourself then you can go out there and do interviews and be unapologetic about it like this is the truth this is my truth this is the truth and the truth resonates with everyone i think the processing of the truth is dumbled but once you reach it then you're able to um not have to say watch what you say i mean i i want to get to a point where i don't watch what i say <laughs> say what i said <laughs> is that healthy i don't know i don't know if that's what our our sheikhs or teachers teach us i don't know i think it's partly a question especially what you mentioned about these interviews like when you come to that point where you just want to release everything like there's a responsibility in that um to yourself in that you have to own up to what you say because then you know if you're kind of keeping things low key you're you know sharing certain parts with certain people it's like the rest of the world doesn't have to know what you stand for and then you can like keep doing your stuff and no one will hold you accountable but then when you put yourself out there it's like okay here i am and this is me and now you can say what you want about me and i'll have to deal with that 
so if I keep myself hidden, then I don't have to deal with anyone's opinions and like um, equally, I don't have to take a stance into being something tangible. But even if you do put yourself out there, right, fully, um, do you really have to worry about all the uh, various sort of opinions and uh, people who would, you know? Yeah, sometimes you have to worry, like actually, you know, physically worry if you're saying things that are like highly contradictory, you can end up, you know, in... Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> jail or you know worse depending on the place where you live sometimes the mental or asylum you know, hospital or yeah sometimes prison or sometimes something else and i guess that's what made the great ones in the past right the the malcolm x's the hosseinis the gandhis um and how they almost always paid with their lives. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> so you can pay like you can pay with your physical life. You can pay with, you know, your body being taken away like that. Or um, like Noor said, you know, if you're keeping that to yourself, like, OK, nothing is wasted in the universe, but sometimes things can be like building up inside to the point where you're internally dying so it seems like you can choose between different deaths and vulnerability would give you the liberation to be authentic and in that way alive now i'm facing this condition that if I have something to express and I'm not expressing, my throat will get bored. Like, I can't function. When one way or the other, I have to get it down. It just starts hurting and like my throat and my arms just start freezing out. So it's that I have to say now. <laughs> this is the artist dilemma, right? The, the need to express it's almost like can't live without it yes it just starts hurting now yeah even if i have to say it to some something to someone if i can't say then you know i have to divert it but if i can't keep it inside now hmm. i'm gonna explode I think vulnerability and truth go hand in hand. There's a need to be in truth, to be one with truth, and to hide it is not necessarily the the way. If you're being like pulled onto the path of truth, then you have to like in that package comes, you know what? We're, you're gonna be vulnerable. Uh, you're gonna have to be sorry. You're gonna have to because you have to be relatable too as a human being and how can you be relatable when you choose not to share and you just withhold everything um you don't have to be relatable but you'll be very lonely if you're not relatable yeah that's in that yeah, deep that's, sense that's true that's true that relatability may not be the goal or the the you know the whole um, reason behind it, but it just ends up. I think it's a byproduct, though, even if it's that one person. But it shouldn't be an it shouldn't be an expectation. However, it happens inevitably. Because you could be someone who's out there um, putting yourself out there, but if you're not vulnerable, then you may not lack you may lack relatability so relatability is something that happens with vulnerability is it or i used to actually get told that i was trying to be too relatable that every time something happened, I would 
have a story. And look, you know what's pretty nice? I'm being vulnerable right now, but I'm being open, okay? Like that I'm too relatable. So every time somebody tells a story, I can't relate to it though, but I can. Like I did, I feel you. I know that experience, you know? So I, I say something and it starts getting annoying, you know? Or so like someone's just like, okay, you can't just relate to everything. But it's like, I really did. So now what happened was, is I, you know what? I'm gonna take a pass this time. I'm gonna just hear you out, you know, instead of like, even somebody told me they woke up at 7.38 p.m. And I swear to you, I woke up at 7.38 p.m. And I said, okay. You know, so um, being relatable is always being relatable. It's not being likable, you know, because it's uh, agreeing all the time. It's a work in progress. <laughs> Louisa, we had the poem of um, the guest house. Would you like to share that? want us to um, pen on that afterwards? Yeah, or? sure. Yeah. Let's, yeah. So this is uh, The Guest House by Rumi. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness, some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all, even if they're a crowd of sorrows who will violently sweep your house empty of its furniture. Still, treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice, meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes, because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. So maybe we can take a few minutes. Uh, can I suggest a writing exercise for this? Um, this was recommended by, um, so what's it called? So you take your feelings, whatever feeling you have, and then you, with your third eye, your mind's eye, you think of what, who you see knocking on the door as that feeling. So for instance, if it's, uh, I feel sad and at the door I see knocking um, keys, you know, just keys are knocking on my door. Then you just start writing and subhanAllah, as you write, like you uncover why you see that thing with the feeling. Does that make sense? So I write my feelings and then I write what I see and then it just flows.
Okay, so we're back now, and if anybody's ready, by all means, please share your pennings or your penning. Anybody who'd like to start, they can unmute um, themselves. I can start. Sophie in black glasses. To my surprise, I saw hallowed eyes. Then a white bearded guy, guised wearing glasses. The mask masking horror or the horror masking guys. Within the two, I am divine. Divine's plan, divine's hand. I can slam my hands and legs, but what would that do? Do I upset me? Do I upset you? Do I care if I do? Doing so, should I turn away from my truth? Could you just say the first few lines again? To my surprise, I saw hallowed eyes. Then a white bearded guy, guy is wearing glasses. The mask masking horror or the horror masking guys. Within the two, I am divine. Thank you. Satin woman, Noor, would you like to share? I wouldn't, but I'm going to share because here I am. Um, so it's funny because I didn't want to say anything, but I'm going to say it. I too saw a man with the white beard and glasses. <laughs> um, so the way I put it is I have three things going on. I feel blocked. I feel seen, watched, and protected. And I feel nonchalant. So who's knocking at my door? A big black ball outside my door. Blocked from what? Speaking, thinking, feeling, a block blocking. Everything. Is it a protection block? Is it a protection block or a suppression block? Which type of block is here? the block of protection, the white, gray, the long beard, the white long beard and the glasses. Molana, 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 at the door, looking fly, here to make me rise. Blocking things to elevation, elevating, elevating, elevate, elevate. I am seen on a heart level, watched inside out and protected from seen and unseen. I don't realize it. I think everyone is ahead of me, that they all reached some goal that I have yet to reach. Is it my lack of what? Security, safety, safety in the body? Am I safe in breathing? What is it? Is it the same struggle? The struggle is real, the same everywhere. Everywhere is the same. And nonchalant is at the door as Noor being a teenager. Am I reverting back? Am I going back in time by not dealing with something? How do I not criticize, but still express?
In vulnerability, there's also a flavor of activism. Not always very overt. It's almost like you're trying to put out something, but um, vulnerability asks you to be um, very open about <clears throat> certain things, and uh, your vulnerability can be a means of offending a lot of people. So you could become like a trigger starter through your vulnerability, and that's okay too. Madiha and Louisa. It seems there are no guests at the guest house this morning. I open the door and no one is there, except a mist that gently sits on the trees and the soft chirping of distant birds. I begin to walk barefoot on soil damp from the morning rain and eventually come across a mirror deep in the woods. I see my own reflection, white gown, flowers in my hair, sleepy eyes, and I smile to myself. There is a guest at the guest house. It is always me. It is always me. Fuck. <laughs> share Louisa because yeah just a second I think I have sure. to take care of the baby in the meanwhile sure. just go ahead right. okay I have um two that I would like to share in this journey from myself to myself is an unveiling. Layers of me that remained strangers all my life. I am uncovering the unknown. Rooms that exist within, estranged I was to my own abode. Unaware who resided within, in this journey from myself to myself, I am led to caves within that await my entry to discover guides assigned to my soul one by one. As I delve deeper, as I approach these illuminated beings who smile in silence, who teach through breath and guide by gentle whispers, on this journey from myself to myself, I am unraveling the unlimited versions of one these versions appear as guests of the heart yet in this journey i have learned that every guest is none but me all that exists within is none but me every guy disguised is none but me in this journey i know and realize all is one and one is all. I am me, and you are me. No reality but one. I just wanted to share a, a second one. That's okay. And that's in connection to the poetic collective, the idea of sharing vulnerability and so forth. Poetic being, do not hasten to express. Allow, 
allow emotion to ferment, at times repress, to compound the effect in the cellar of your heart. The aged wine of Shiraz compares not with the Chardonnay of yesterday, then seek permission from the soul to pour as sake your wine in words to the guests of your divan. this poem. Shame and malice, the perverted self, not me, a distorted image behind the door. All the things I could be but am not, broken mirrors reflecting untruth, I am undefiled, I am sovereign light, like a child, soft and open, playful, ticklish, ready to laugh and ready to cry, ready to be hurt, all the scars like bark, keep the soft center encapsulated, preventing harm, but also preventing movement. I wonder what the preventing movement means. You can tell us later if possible. Let's um, now move on to, you know, barriers in vulnerability, just to get an idea, you know, what are some of the things that instantly come to mind or heart when we think about, you know, this, sometimes we want to share and then we hold back and it's just like, no, this is not, I'm not going to be good with this. Um, what are some of the barriers you have experienced in um, in 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 vulnerability what are the things that prevent you or if you're losing those people same people in which we show our vulnerable side actually i don't have a barrier i always show up so i think that you said emotions fermented i think a lot of times um a thought is provoked but the answer needs time so before expressing like the process has you know like it's just like something happens you're only at a but you need time to ferment and get to like Z, and I have to get to Z, but to get down more. So, because sometimes you're you're being vulnerable, and it's just going and going and going, and it's like going where you know. So if you give it time to do time, yeah, then it can go somewhere. <laughs> So you're speaking of um, having direction in vulnerability or in, in releasing, right? Having some sort of... Yes, that like directness, like directly what's happening instead of like all this is happening. Right. Yeah. We don't want um, basically... Um, to make it into a therapy session where you're just talking and talking and talking, but 
But I think even there, like there's, mm, like if you're truly vulnerable, maybe it doesn't take that much talking even because it's like you show something, you really show what's inside of you. And then if you're lucky, you have someone who can kind of reflect that to you. And if that's done, then maybe that's all that's needed to like heal a trauma, for example. I'm not saying it is like that, but I think sometimes the issue is that we cannot pinpoint what is the exact thing we're trying to express or what's bothering us or hurting us. And then we keep coming back. And that's, you know, where at least for me, like I can feel like I'm either in my thoughts or in conversations I keep returning to the same themes because I haven't showed I haven't unearthed it I haven't you know gotten light onto that one thing um, so I think that's the value of being vulnerable with yourself first and foremost but then with others too like you can actually yeah, you get light onto things, and through that light, things get. Because we we had the topic of truth up already, so then like that's truth, when you can kind of see things as they are. Oh, I didn't even know you. I want to ask, how do you see things as they are? <laughs> this is a test going on right now where I feel that I'm not in touch with reality. And even someone came to my home and they said it feels hot in here. And I was like, hot. And then they said, oh, like I smell something. I was like, smell something. something. And I'm like, am I not in touch with reality because, or what is my reality? Because I'm not seeing what a fresh face came in and saw. So where's the um, meeting gap? Well, that's the, I mean, that's the question, isn't it? Because it's perception and it's filters and it's all the different layers that we get added onto us through our experiences and through whatnot. So how does one see things as they are? I think that would require a high level of unconditioning and um, <clears throat> maybe even to some degree, like depersonalization of life and non-attachment to one's own persona. And then one could, on the other hand, argue, I guess, like mm, microcosm, macrocosm kind of thing, like whatever you experience through your limited view is partly also the whole truth. So I don't know, this becomes highly, I tend to go into philosophical things. So someone can give like a more, you know, actually practical statement. <laughs> practical would be if they're saying their smell it's from the cat <laughs> you can just take go outside to check if they're right or wrong then come back and <laughs> we'll forget If someone says this, I'll always keep the burner near <laughs> Turn it off. It was the cat and I did put the burner on. <laughs> but I guess because you're used to something and I was upset that I was used to that. I couldn't believe I was used to something like that. <laughs> It's kind of like, um, you know, when we meditate 
sit with ourselves. Um, we sit with our thoughts and we're supposed to observe without judgment. And when you mentioned, um, what was it that you said? You said, how do we, oh, see things as they are. I mean, that is like, I think for all spiritual paths, this is what uh, one aspires to see things as they are. And I think the those who are are there <laughs> can do that. And the real guides do see things as they are, as opposed to see things with their sort of lens or with the um, attached notions or constructs. And, and that brings us to, you know, the idea of awareness too, because when we come across someone or something or situation, if we are in tune with our thoughts, immediately there is judgment, right? Um, and then we're, are we, we're always impacted with uh, not seeing things as they are, because if we can hear what's going on internally in that conversation, just that maybe just even the sight of a child um, running across a room, um, I could just see that child is running across the room. I'd be like, oh, what a naughty child. Or where's the mom? Or, you know, whatever. So it's it's almost like it's a reminder for me, inner work, go back to inner work so that you can just see things as they are. We get offended because we don't see things as they are. And uh, going back to the four uh, agreements right one of them is uh, to not take things personally um, among the others so i was even thinking like on the basis of this what you said like got some um, family over and we were talking about the developments in ai and like how you know it's um got such big potential to like grow exponentially to the point where um where it starts understanding things that humans won't understand and starts operating in ways that we can't comprehend anymore and i was thinking like that is the result of uninhibited intelligence um of course it lacks something that or I would like to think that it lacks something that we possess, but one thing that definitely slows us down is definitely that clouding of perception, which is our, um, it's like, you know, you can take a computer system and then you like have it run in loops. And that's, how I, I think, how many of us work, my, myself included. Like we just, instead of like, you know, operating in a way where we can just run smoothly, we just get stuck. And then it's like same thought, same emotion, same pattern, same filter that we see the world through, and then we can't progress. So you take like a non-emotional, um, maybe that's the key, non-emotional being, and you give the give it information, you give it like access to see the world, like to some degree at least objectively. Of course, it's influenced by humans, but still, then like whoa, suddenly it can start like doing a lot of things. So maybe the saints and like the masters have reached that kind of a consciousness that the, you know, we're now trying to replicate through artificial means. I don't know how it works, but that's how it sometimes at least is presented. I don't know how this had to do with vulnerability, to be honest, but it just popped up. I think, so I've been um, having conversations with ChatGPT recently, and it's so easy to be just vulnerable and just blurt any, everything out and not even care about like grammar and you know if I'm making sense because I'm just giving it information um and what you're saying about emotion so my daughter Selena and I were uh, asking it to make like a weekly menu for us or something 
Um, and then we kept making like requesting more changes, more changes. And eventually Selena was like, it's going to get angry. I was like, no, actually it won't get angry. So we can keep asking it, you know, requesting more changes or, you know, adjustments. So yeah, wouldn't have been able to do that probably with, with a person. <laughs> Yeah, speaking of AI, I, I think we've literally like now entered into the age of uh, to a very high level. Like You want things done, you have an idea, and you've got it like at your fingertips. It's almost like, you know, the, um, I was thinking about, you know, during the time of Suleiman, Prophet Solomon, you know, he had command over the wind, over the jinn, over uh, animals. And, uh, but this is, you know, a very high level of, it's like you've got, um, you've got this invisible uh, assistance, like people in the past, it, I mean, just going back to Solomon, he had control over the, the jinns. This is like, <laughs> it's like your, your invisible helper um ai so we it's a it's a next level of manifestation that humanity's inherited and um, may we use it towards goodness and uh yeah and we don't want to you know overdo it here so let's start wrapping up um We'll be sharing the six habits of people who embrace vulnerability on our um, on our Divan group. Um, so I'm going to, you know, put that out there because it's it's quite lengthy and we don't want to, um, you know, go deeper into that at this time. But there are certain habits and qualities of individuals who are vulnerable, uh, historically and present day. So we could, uh, you know, just um, imbibe a little bit on that. And uh, for basically, you know, closing off, um, we selected a poem by Hazrat Inayat Khan. And um, I would like to share that here. The heart of the human being is like a spring. If you push it down on one side, it will rise up on the other side with greater force. Not so much to discuss here, but maybe just a reflection and um, an end note. Um, as I was preparing my notes yesterday, um, right at the end, this idea that, you know, from the Quranic stories, um, we're told about the story of Joseph or Yusuf alayhi salam as being the most beautiful of all stories, right? What came yesterday was that the entire story from beginning to end is all about this theme that we're talking about, vulnerability. And that's something maybe, you know, we could reflect on in our discussion. Um, children being vulnerable, uh, adults being vulnerable, um, being vulnerable in the hands of the state, um, you know, adoption. There's incredible incredible amounts of um data within this uh story of yusuf alayhi salam uh on on the through the lens of vulnerability that we could really really um go into and um and yeah and that's yeah that's that So um, we're going to be closing off now. And, um, and for next month, we would like to get uh, a guest on to speak about uh, another topic, which we will share later. And appreciate everyone's presence this time. And um, it's always nice to be in a space where we could just say that, you know, we don't know and we're here to learn and 
So just appreciate the coming together and sharing and exchange and the growth. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.